Welcome to the Elliot Alert. My guest today is Mr. Eric Walden, who is the Deputy Chief of Staff at the Juvenile Court here in Jefferson County. Welcome today, Mr. Walden. How you doing, Mr. Elliot? It's good to see you again. Now, can you tell me a little bit about that? Because people will hear, okay, juvenile, what does that mean? Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? All right. Well, I'm a 2009 graduate of the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff with a degree in psychology. Uh, I'm also a 2012 uh, graduate from Strait University with an MBA in public administration. Um, I'm married uh, for about five years now. I think now, my wife's. Now make sure, make sure that it's the right one. I don't want to get you five, in trouble. Five <laughs> years, five years. Um, we have we have five beautiful children. We have uh, we have four girls and, and one boy. Now, now tell me, with that degree in psychology, does mm -hmm. that help in reference to your job duties? Yes, it does. Um, psychology is such a broad field, has such a broad array of things that be addressed, and, and, and I apply it daily uh, in working with juveniles. Um, so it came, came come in very, very handy in, in with what I'm doing today. Now, now tell me, um, you also said that you were a native of Pine Bluff, right? Not originally. Not originally. Uh, I moved to Pine Bluff in 2004 from Kansas. Mm -hmm. I moved to Pine Bluff when I, when I turned 18 right. um, to give myself a fresh start because as a juvenile, um, I, I was involved in a lot of things I had no business being involved in. I was like many of the kids that I work with today. Mm -hmm. uh, so I moved here to give myself a fresh start and to turn my life around. And you know, that's, that's such a, a, a positive thing because a lot of times kids believe because they had a rocky past that there's no future. Yeah. And that's absolutely not the truth. Uh, when you have a, a zeal to change some things in your life, you can actually do it. And, and you and I are living witnesses. Yes. That. So um, tell me, like, as you came to Pine Bluff, what made you say, okay, I want to work with juveniles? Um, for one, I wanted to help others. I wanted to help those kids that were in the same positions that I was in to try and keep them from going down those same paths. Um, at 16, I was put out of school, expelled from school. So when I moved to Pine Bluff, the first thing I did was I started working on getting my GED. Um, wow, that, that's amazing. So even though you, as we said, had a rocky past. You decided, okay, I'm gonna do better, and you moved forward to, towards doing that. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and see, the thing about that is, and I know you mentor and I mentor as well, and those are some of the key things that we tell our kids that look, just because uh, at a 16, 17, 18, you made some bad decisions, you can still turn some still things turn around, around. Yeah. and I know you have a story in reference to doing that and working with the kids. Yes, um, in 2000, uh, at the end of 2009, uh, right before I graduated from UHB, I started mentoring at juvenile court, mm -hmm. um, actually with Mr. Elliott. Uh, started at the very bottom, I was working, working for free, working with kids when I could, trying to help them uh, stay out of detention, trying to get them to turn their lives around and not uh, not commit criminal offenses, stop getting suspended from school, start being obedient to their parents. And, uh, and we worked in that mentoring program for about two years and was able to see some great success stories out of it. Kids that finally, uh, they start going back to school, they, they earned their diplomas, or they went to college, or they got jobs. So we've seen some good turnaround with that. And, and you know, one of the things that we used to hear all the time is, man, you don't know, you don't understand, you ain't, you ain't have it as hard as I have. And, and, and just because you put on a suit and tie and you're a little older, yeah. kids assume that you don't understand anymore. And once you start breaking it down to how your life has been affected, who has mentored you and how you change your life around, are they a little bit more receptive to it? They are, once, once they realize, because um, I have some tattoos and, mm -hmm. and or they hear stories about me because their parents may know me, um, they're like, well, well, Mr. Eric used to be such and such, but now, but but look at him now. Um, so it, it gives them, it gives them that hope that they can't. It's never too late to turn their life around. That their history doesn't have to be a hindrance to them. Right. And see that uh, once again, I think that's a, a a major part of not just mentoring but life with our kids because as you mentor them, you start to find out some of the issues that yep. they have, and then the first thing they say is, well. You know, you, you don't understand it because you ain't never been through it. Well, guess what? I have. Mm -hmm. Or if I haven't, I've mentored or I've seen it uh, because you know as well as I know, when you get in the homes of juveniles and yeah. you see different things, a lot of times 
uh, people in society say, well, why does that kid act so crazy? Or why yeah. does that kid do what he's doing? There may be a whole new set of issues, issues at the house that nobody doesn't see. And then when they come to school, guess what? They right. have to conform to society norms. Yes. Which I think is, is kind of impossible because if you don't, if you're not eating or sleeping right or if you have chaos in, in your house, when you come to, uh, to school, what you think you're going to and, and, and it falls back to psychology. Mm -hmm. uh, we learned Maslow's hierarchy. If those basic needs aren't met, that kid's not going to function on those upper levels. They're not going to do it. Right. And see, that's some psychology stuff. I, I don't know. My mine's was communication. My master's in public administration. So you can. <laughs> <laughs> he's hitting me with the psychology stuff now. But um, again, I think that having that background, and you tell me if that's correct, uh, allows you to be a little bit more sympathetic and be able it to does. address some of those issues. It Is does. that correct? Because because kids know. They know who's who's working with them to get a paycheck and who sincerely cares about them. If you have somebody that has that background, has that history, they they feel more comfortable with that person. Mm -hmm. And see, uh, again, you just said something key: that background and that history. You know, it, it's it's kids can pick up on certain things. Yes. You know, and as you said, if you want a paycheck or if you actually sincerely care about them. And they can kind of, they can pick up on that. It's yeah. how you interact with them. Is that correct? That's correct. And um, a, a lot of times, uh, some of the, the things you have to do is discipline. Yes. You know, uh, because they're not getting that structure and discipline at home. So it's actually how you discipline and your approach. Them and your approach. Yep. Uh, when we come back, we're going to have to take a break. But when we come back, um, we're going to talk about some of those um, tough love situations. Okay. We'll be right back. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Hey, look, it's those guys. What's good? What's up? What's happening today? What's those pearly whites, man? Yeah. Ooh, cute. Are you good to try? I'm fine. Hey girl, hey girl, what's the sound? What's the name? What's good? What's up? How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Sir, go ahead and step out of the vehicle for me. Yes, sir. See ya, buddy. Today, Sean's got a hearing. We'll see how it goes. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Welcome back to the Elliot Alert. Uh, again, my guest today is Mr. Eric Walden, who is the Deputy Chief of Juvenile Court, uh, Judge Ernest E. Brown, uh, Deputy Chief, uh, newly uh, Deputy yes. Chief. Uh, and Mr. Walden, let's talk about your matriculation through juvenile court because, see, you started from a volunteer. Yes. I remember you coming in when you, you wouldn't get no hours. He was dressed nice. He was professional, <laughs> did not miss a day. And I was like, man, I'm really impressed with this guy. And, uh, you know, you, you made, you made, uh, you work for you. Yes. And uh, a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people take volunteerism as like a joke and they don't really put their best foot forward. But I can't say that about you. You, you started off 
professional and look at you now. Yes, sir. Can you tell me a little bit uh, about uh, what was your drive with that? Um, I, I was sincere about wanting to work with youth. Uh, put in the application in 2009, wanting to work with kids, um, was coming to court on my own time, not yes. getting paid, spending time at the center, uh, spending time in attention with kids, not getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. um, because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to work with youth. I wanted to reach out to those youth to keep them from going down those same paths and not end up in those same, same situations that I was in. Now, now um, tell us also the <coughs> time that mm -hmm. you put in, because you didn't just volunteer, come in for an hour, hour and a half, and then go about your business. You actually put time yeah, we in. Like, we like five, six, seven, eight hours a day. Right. Um, from, from volunteer, then I was able to uh, to work in a grant program that we started, it was called the Youth Advocate Program, mm -hmm. uh, which was which was designed to address those m most at-risk kids. And so from that, I had about ten kids assigned to me that I would work with on a daily basis, uh, spending one hour, two hour, three hours uh, per kid, uh, five, six, seven days a week. Sometimes I was in the home multiple days a week, spending time with them and their parents, trying to improve the conditions there. Uh, taking them out to events like coming out to UFB basketball games, mm -hmm. uh, the museum, uh, taking them to other speaking engagements, things like that, trying to show them another side. Uh, you'd be surprised at how many kids that live in Pine Bluff that have never been out to see the college campus. Wow. Never been on the other side of town. Um, you'd also be surprised at how many kids are in high school that can't read and write. So some of that time we'd spent going to the library, studying, reading, uh, looking at books. Uh, from working in the mentoring program, I then transitioned over into probation. Uh, started probation in October 2011. Um, the following year in 2012, I ended up getting promoted to the training supervisor. Um, so at that point, I was responsible for training all the new staff that came in, and then also having the current staff go through ongoing training throughout the year. Um, and then from training supervisor, uh, from 2012, now I'm here as the assistant chief at uh, juvenile court. And now I oversee all, all the operations uh, try to make sure everything's run smoothly, that we're, we're a well-oiled machine, making sure needs are addressed, uh, making sure the kids are getting the services they need. And you, know. you, you still have that, that background and that knowledge of number one, training, yes. uh, number two, <coughs> volunteering, you know, number three, knowing the system in reference to probation uh, and also intake as well. Yes. So you know the whole system in itself, and here's the, the, the most exciting thing. You knew what you wanted to do, and you made a decision that you gonna do it. That means to me that you jumped. Yeah. A lot of times people <laughs> say, you know what? I wanna work with you, youth. I wanna work here, I wanna do this, I wanna do all, and then all those wants stay stagnated mm -hmm. because you knew that, okay, my way in is to volunteer and I have to be professional, <clears throat> I have to be committed, I have to do all those things so people can look at me and say, okay, I'm gonna give him an opportunity. So to our youth who say, okay, I want a job, I want to be a police officer, I want to be a juvenile, such and such, it is, it is imperative that you go volunteer so you know yep. if you're in college, if you want to be a police officer, if you volunteer, at a police department, you can see what police officers do. What they do. If you volunteer at juvenile court and you want to work with juveniles, you see actually what they do. Yeah. And you'll see from where that love and that passion comes from. So, you know, I applaud you for, for jumping because a lot of people will not jump. And we as uh, adults and leaders in the community, we have to put forth that foot to let these kids jump. If they want to do something, they have to take the initiative yes. to get it done. Is that correct? That's correct. You gotta have that initiative to do it. Don't focus on whether or not getting paid. If you sincerely want to do it, go out and do it. That's right. Yeah, because there should be some love in it. And, it, yeah. and if there's some love in what you do, uh, the pay at some point doesn't matter. But if you love it, you're gonna get to where That's you right. want to go. That's right. Don't yeah. do it for the income, right. do it for the outcome. The Hit the nail on the head, the <laughs> outcome. And uh, I guess those are some of the things you tell the kids when you're mentoring. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me ask you this. Um, we have to go to a break, but I, I want to ask you exactly 
how successful do you think uh, the programs have been in Jefferson County to, to kind of change some things around? We, uh, when we had the Youth Advocate Program, uh, it was very successful. We had a uh, very good budget. Uh, we spent that money on signing mentors to kids that really needed them to taking them activities, taking them out to eat, trying to show them um, they can do positive things and not have to get in trouble. They can go to different places, expose, giving them exposure. Like I said, bringing them out to UAPB, taking them to Little Rock, uh, to Philander Smith and other, and other events. Uh, and we also, we've also had other grant programs where we, where we had a family engagement program where we were able to not only address the needs of the kid, but address the needs of the whole family where we were, where we were able to get housing agency involved, child support, mm -hmm. DHS, to bring, have all the community resources around the table to get this family on track because what we've seen in juvenile court is that it's not always just one kid, but it may be two or three kids in the home right. that are in the system, that are in trouble. Um, so we bring everybody to the table to get this family on track so they don't have to live a life being on court supervision or live a life being detained. Well, um, I'm glad you said that. We have to go on break, but when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the effectiveness of those programs and the uh, how they work here in uh, Jefferson County. So we'll be right back. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. How long have we been married there? For 76 years. He was kind and generous to me before we married, and he was kind and generous to me all these years that we have been married. We had been looking at a lot of different houses in different places around that area. And when we came by this house, it was green. And I love green. I'm Irish. <laughs> and so I said, oh, there's our house. I know it. We decided on Meals on Wheels because at my age, I was getting to the point where I couldn't do all the things that I had been able to do. We're the Spans. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Welcome back to the Elliot Alert. Uh, again, my guest today is Mr. Eric Walden, uh, Deputy Chief of Jefferson County Juvenile Court. Uh, can do it. Can I call you Deputy Chief or Eric? I mean, can I still call you Eric? Or, I, mean, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't take titles. Of right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, again, I, I appreciate everything you do. And uh, when we were talking about uh, the last segment, we were kind of talking about discipline and some of those things that that ha have to happen. Can you tell me from a juvenile? court perspective what happens when a kid let's say gets in trouble to okay. do what's is it probation and parole is it I mean what's the, the process well it, first of all it depends on how how they come to us okay um, sometimes you have schools that'll that'll file what's called a fee stands mm -hmm. for family need of services that might file a fence petition on a kid because they're habitually absent from school mm -hmm. uh, they're leaving home without permission they're disobedient to parents at home or, or other things and so when that comes in, uh, we, serve the, we serve the family for court, have them appear before the judge, and then the judge determines whether or not that case should be opened or if it should be dismissed. Mm -hmm. if, he's, if he finds that it should be opened, uh, then we order services. It may be counseling, uh, it may be services through DHS, mm -hmm. 
It may be services through um, like the Hope Center if a young lady's pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, it could be electronic monitor. It could be anger management classes. It could be uh, adolescent improvement classes. There's a, there's a vast array of things mm -hmm. that we can order. If a kid is brought to us on a, on a criminal offense, uh, first of all, we, we make a decision whether or not we're gonna detain or, or release that juvenile. If they're detained, they come to court to see the judge for a probable cause hearing. And then from there, we, we, the judge determines whether or not uh, further detention is needed or if that kid can be released uh, on, on conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when they come back to court, they're placed on probation. And then from there, we order services, counseling, uh, anger management, electronic monitor, uh, boot camp, and things of that nature. So now, um, <coughs> if a kid is placed on probation, um, what's the probation? Uh, if they're 14, can the probation be uh, only a year or two, or or how long does this kid have to be on probation, or is it a set term? Well, it, it it goes back to the offense. If it's a misdemeanor, it's a year of probation. Now, if they continue to violate, they continue to skip school, they're getting suspended from school, they're continuing to act out at home and things like that, then their time is going to get extended because they're going to violate their probation, and then judge is going to impose more sanctions and he's going to extend them out. Okay. So it just depends on the offense. They can be on probation up to a year on misdemeanors and two years on felonies. So now, what you're saying is if a parent is having a problem with a kid, you, you mentioned the fence, family in need of services, uh, you, you don't have to pull your hair out. You can, you can say, okay, I, I need some help and there's some services available. Let me go down and file a fence. Now yep. when somebody says file a fence, is it tons of paperwork that you just have to file <laughs> and you have to give all your parental rights away? I mean, how, how does that work? The uh, the fence petition is two pages. The front page it asks for your name, the kid's name, asks for address, phone numbers, and then it asks there's there's a check box of information to ask what the kid's doing. You you check what applies, and then there's there's a back page where you sign, and then we have it notarized, and then we have it processed, we have it filed, and then uh, and then we set it for court. Okay. So uh, what you're saying is for for those people who are may have a child that's disorderly or, or you're having problem with discipline, there's uh, a way to, that the court can step in and help you yes. do that. And then, not just help you, but provide an array of services that can help turn that kid around. Yes, that's correct. Now, from, uh, from a juvenile standpoint, I, I know one of the things uh, that the judge is adamant about is actually providing services to help change this, this kid around. Uh, you've mentored a lot and you've seen kids go through the juvenile um, system a lot. Has there been any success? Yes, mm -hmm. um, even to this day, I have kids that, that I worked with six years ago that, 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 that say thank you for the things that you, you told me or thank you for the time you spent with me. Um, they've gone off to college, they're working. I got one young man that I started mentoring and he works for Linux. Uh, he's about to get married. Uh, he's doing really well. And, and so we do have those success stories, and unfortunately we do have those that, that we put in that time and effort and, and they don't make it. Some, mm -hmm. some do get sent to prison or things happen. Right. So. But I, I, can, I can say during the time that I have and also been around, I can say I'll be somewhere out and I don't even remember the kid. And they'll say, hey, Mr. Elliott, how are you doing? And I say, wow, uh, hey, how's it going? Well, you don't remember me, do you? Yeah, well, yeah, I do. <laughs> it's from juvenile, and, and, and you did this or you said that. You never know as an adult what kind word or what yeah. discipline or what thing that you instill upon a kid, how that may change their perspective and change and help change a, a, a new kid. Yeah. So I, I think the, the job that you guys have is a very important uh, job. It's a necessary job. And my prayer is that you guys get good and decent people in there who loves what they're doing. Yeah. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, can you tell me a little bit how you love what you do? <laughs> Especially being uh, the deputy chief because, again, is this a new position for you and how long have you had it and, you know, all that good stuff? This is, this is a new position. Uh, I've been in this position for about two weeks now. Mm -hmm. um, the position that I'm in, what I do at juvenile court, I, I feel at home. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes it's hard to separate work and home, but I love what I do. Um, willing to come in early and stay late, whatever it takes to get the job done. 
Now, if somebody, if a, if a kid sees this or an adult sees it and they say, well, you know what, I want to get in contact with Mr. Walden because I have some further questions, mm -hmm. how can they get in contact with you? Um, they can reach me at 870-541-5455 uh, or they can reach me at 870-718-5123 and they can also re uh, reach me at email at ewalden at jeffersoncircuitcourt6.org. And uh, I just want to say this guy will most definitely return your phone call or your email. He's real busy, but he always takes a <laughs> second to do it. I, I don't know if uh, it's because I've been knowing him for a while, and I knew him when he was uh, you know, little on a totem pole, but right now I can tell you he is a testament of what hard work and dedication and love what you're doing will, will get you. You'll go from volunteer to almost running them. The, the place. So uh, I want to thank you for coming, Mr. Walden, and let you know you, you have just been placed on alert. Thank you.